see revival like the Brownsville revival. Everybody compares revival to that, and they, they want to see that in their church. They want to see, they want to see hundreds of people for, for weeks just, just coming in and getting saved and giving their life to the Lord, and, 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 and everybody's, that's what they're talking about, this church. And, 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 and it's, it, was, it was, I've heard about it. I've seen videos of it. It looked like an amazing event. But I see people searching for that and looking for that, and churches trying to come together. And, and recreate that. Revival is nothing that we can create. It's something that we could be obedient and walk in. And what I was seeing up there was revival right here tonight. And in, in your lives here. If it's one person tonight that's revived. <laughs> if one person in here tonight walks out of here Saying, man, I've got a new fire and, and, and a new love and a new understanding of who Christ is. We'll do it. We'll, 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 we'll. That's what it's about. That's revival. Revival took place here. Now, you could be looking at the video of this and going, oh, these guys are praying for revival. There's a revival. You know, there's a bunch of guys just standing around. They're waiting. Nothing's happening. Nothing's going on. We leave. We close the doors at 10 o'clock, and that's it. And people are like, oh, what kind of revival was that? That's because that's the world. That's, how, that's what the world sees. And right now, we're stuck. There's a lot of world going on. The world is being run by the world right now. It's 100%. Everything that you see, everything that's going on, is, all, is, 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 is run by the world. There's, there's things, there's saying, there's phrases that are being created and being started that, that we've never seen or heard before. I've, I've looked in this book all over for the phrase social distancing, and I can't find it anywhere. I can't find it anywhere. I've, back and forth. When this, a few weeks ago, or it's been weeks, it's been months, when they asked churches to, um, to stop meeting and they asked for groups to stop meeting. They said, do um, you remember? They said, it's only going to be a couple weeks. Just give it a couple weeks. Go online. Have your services online. Um, do your home churches. Try to keep it under six people. They started kind of giving us a new structure, a new, a new way of looking at things. The world, the world was giving us this. And it, it, it started to create almost a new way of life. Almost like a community, a new community. That people began to follow. Churches began to follow. And some of us looked at it going, what's happening? What's going on? So I started reading, and I've given this, I've talked about this before. In Genesis, and I'm going to just kind of do this a little fast to get to the point. After the ark and after the flood, and oh, I can see people. I see who's sleeping now. Noah and his family got off the ark. And God told them to go out and multiply. He said, Go spread yourself and multiply. He told his sons that. And they went. We get to Genesis 11. And it talks about, it said, Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. 
As the people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. So they were building something like a pyramid. They did this, so they said, so that we make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. God gave them an order. He gave them directions. He said, go scatter yourself. Go multiply. Go. So what happened is, these people decided to settle and to make their own tower. To, to reward themselves, to, to, to bring glory to themselves, per se, for what they're doing. They didn't build it for God. They built it for themselves. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. This is the verse that blows me away. This is the verse that that was life-changing to me. This is the verse that, that I kind of stick to this, and I look at it, and I'm like, wow. Wow, 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 wow. The Lord said, this is Genesis eleven six. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, right, to build this tower, he said, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. So the Lord came down, saw a group of people disobeying what he asked them to do. And the Lord said, because they speak the same language, nothing will be impossible for them. Listen, that, that should wake you up a little bit. Here's a group of people not working for the Lord. They're coming together. They're creating their own language. They're communicating together with the, themselves. And the Lord's looking at it going, dude, these people can't be stopped. They can't be stopped because they're speaking the same language, because they're communicating, because they're working together, doing something. Now, it's totally against what God, it's the opposite of what God said to do. So God, what did he do? You guys know the story? He went in there. He scattered their, their, their languages. He messed up their languages. And he, gave them, he says he gave them new tongues. He gave them new languages. And guess what happened? They couldn't talk to each other anymore. They lost communication with each other. They couldn't communicate with each other. When they stopped understanding each other and they couldn't commute, communicate together anymore, what happened? It fell apart. So look, just put just that right there in your life real fast. If you stop communicating with each other, with your wife, with your kids, with your family, with your friends, if you stop communicating with them, what happens? That relationship dies. It falls apart. Now, the, the beautiful part of this is that as Christians and believers, which everybody in here, on a Wednesday night, you're sitting in church, you, 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 you believe, you want to believe, you're on your way to believing. I think most of you, my guys, I know you've confessed with your mouth that you believe. Some of us are waiting for our hearts to catch up to our mouths. And, 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 and that will happen. But we, we're working, we're doing what God has asked us to do. Right? So here we are communicating like we should be, communicating on the same language. We should be talking the same thing. We should be having the same words. We should, we should be on the same page of what's going on, right? Because we follow what this book says. Because we say we believe in Jesus Christ. And we say that we're done living the life that we've been living. We want to live a new way and have a new understanding of things. So we, we, we offer this book and say, listen, this is what's changed our lives. 
And we're, and we're talking, communicating this, right? But guess what? Now we have God on our side. We have, we have the hand of God on us. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Think about this for a second. You should have it in your head already. If we're in one communication, if we're in one language, if we're all talking the same talk, unstoppable, and we're listening to what this book says, nothing should stop us. Why? Because God's got us. He's carrying us through this. It's, it's impossible to stop. We're impossible to stop. But guess what happens? We don't realize that. We don't take on that identity. We look at that. We look at our failures. And we look like we're not worthy of this. This isn't. I've, I've, I, I don't understand this well enough. Again, I've looked in this book to try to see where, where it says we have to understand this perfectly to, to, to walk in his grace and his mercy and his love. What I do see now is what the world is doing. I can't even look at notes. I go all over the place. How can we communicate? And how can we talk? And how can we be in each other's lives when they want us to separate each other? When they want us to stay six feet apart? How are we supposed to communicate when they have our faces covered and our mouths covered? How are we supposed to communicate? How, people are afraid to hug each other now. People are afraid to shake hands now. I mean, what, what they, they've put such a fear in the world that, that we, it's, 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 it's a battle, and it's a fight, it's a struggle to walk in this. As believers and as Christians, listen, we can, we can pray all day for the world to change, for things to change, but the change needs to start amongst ourselves, with us, with our understanding. We can't walk in fear. We can, we can walk with, with wisdom. We can walk being smart. We can walk with respect of, of sickness and respect of disease. But we don't have to fear that. It's got no control over us. But, but we see what's going on in the world right now. And it's a battle. They've, they've, they've made social media the go-to for churches. A lot of churches use social media for everything. The news... Is on social media. We get our information, our weather, everything is on social media. Who in this room doesn't have a cell phone? Yeah, just because you haven't gotten one yet. That's all. No cell phone. Now, is it by choice that you don't have a cell phone? Amen. Now, what if right now, what if they shut off the internet? If they shut off the internet, what, what would people do? What would the church do? What would 90% of the church do? What would they do? They, 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 they shut down. They, they, don't, they don't know what to do. It would, it would, it would, be, it would, it would be craziness if the internet shut down. Why are, we letting, why are we relying on the world so much for our relationship with Christ? for revival, for getting the word of God out. Do you understand that it's our responsibility to tell people about Jesus? It's great. It's great you can go online and you can tell people and you can, you can advertise stuff and you can promote it and you can put it out there, but here's my conspiracy stuff. The world wants us to rely on this so much. They want us to, they want us to start giving up everything. They want us to continue to stay away from each other. They want to continue to, to give parents a, a miserable time trying to get their kids in school. Kids don't want to go to school anymore. It's ridiculous. If a kid gets in contact with somebody who's coughing or has got a fever that day, everybody's sent home. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's just, it's, it's, now you go online for school. Imagine they create everything to where we go online. So, they're making us rely on this 100%. And once they have us all relying on this, right, what happens when they shut it down? Whoo! Are you kidding me? Listen, I, I, I don't even know where I'm going to shop anymore. I go to Amazon. Now I got to figure out how I got to shop. Now I got to figure out where I'm going to get stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? We're, we're not even talking about truckings getting shut down and, 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 and grocery stores not having food. We're not even there yet. We're just saying the internet shuts down, which isn't, which 
which isn't a big thing. 25 years ago, this wasn't even existing. So we've, we've lived without it before, but we're so comfortable with it now, and we've taken this, this, this internet, and we've relied on it so much that we've, the church, and I'm going to say the church, the Bible believers have, have, have used this to spread the word of God, which is, which is good, which is good. But when it comes down to it, it's not that good. It's not that good. We need to rely on ourselves. We need to rely, come back to what this is about. It's about community. Moses was talking about the, the acts. Listen, we should be praying every night. We should be open every night. This church should be open all day, every day, open. Night. And I know Moses, that's his heart. That's what, he try, that's, that's what he does. I seen that model when I first got saved. He, t- he, 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 he already took, gave half my story when he was up here. But Meredith was my kid's teacher. And my kid was, I was a mess, beyond a mess. My, my kid's mom dropped my son off to me and says, I can't take care of him no more. He's yours to take care of. And I didn't know what to do. I'm, I mean, I knew what to do, but I didn't know, like, how I was going to live now, take care of him. He's supposed to go to school. I got a job. I remember I took him to work with me the first day, and I'm like, can someone hold him up in the office or something? And I worked in a prison. And, I, and they're like, Tompkins. I said, what am I supposed to do? Like, like, she's in the front lobby. She's not going nowhere. Can't he just stay up here for the day? So they told me to go find, like, a VPK. And I drove around all over the place. And churches had the schools there, the VPK. It's a free pre-K. And I remember I walked in, and I was a mess. And I, 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 I was, I'm not very polite. I was kind of rude. I'm kind of like I am now a little bit, you know, but without Jesus. <clears throat> And my son went to this class, and I met Meredith there. This was, Meredith didn't know, Moses wasn't even in the picture yet. And I met Meredith, and I, and I started, inter, you know, telling her the story was going on, and I think I ended up getting married at some time during that period, and to somebody, I, I got married over the phone, actually, and it was somebody to help me take care of my son, because I didn't know what to do. So Meredith was there, and she saw this, and Meredith she, she used to try to tell me about God. And I, listen, I was crying up here because, because I, Meredith used to try to pray for me. She used to tell me about God. And I used to say the worst things about God. I would curse God. I would tell her to take her God someplace else. I would tell her I don't want nothing to do with this God. And it, out of my mouth, I said these things. And her, you know, she never took it as offense. She never... She never stopped, but she never got mad at me, and she continued to be my friend. And I I never really met anybody like that. So this went on for, for a little bit of time, and her and I, you know, I'd be going through stuff, and I think actually one time you even, I even went and got tattooed, and you babysat for me as I went to the tattoo shop or as I got tattooed. I mean, like, she was, she, like, like, I was, I, was, I was a mess in this world. And she continued to pray for me. She continued to tell me about God. And I pushed it out. Listen, that wasn't the internet. That was, she wasn't staying away from me. She wasn't social distancing herself. She was, she was there. She saw, she saw someone in distress. And someone needed Jesus. And she continued. Well, shortly after that, about a year or so, she says, hey, I've, I've got a man in my life, I'd like you to meet him. And I'm like, why do I want to meet him? She's like, he's a really cool guy. He rides a motorcycle, and he's a pastor. And I said, yeah, no, I really don't want to meet him. I was like, it's cool. So I remember meeting him in the store one time, and he's inviting me to church. And I'm like, yeah, great. I was like, no, I was, yeah, it was, it was, it was weird. But in my testimony, I talk about how for about a year, I kept seeing this guy everywhere. And he kept inviting me to this church. And I kept saying, dude, I don't go to church. I don't want nothing to do with church. And he'd say, okay, Jesus loves you. God bless. And smile. And he never got mad. He never stopped. He never took it personal. But he was persistent with it every time, every time I saw him. That's where his heart was. That's where his heart was. His heart was to tell people about Jesus. Because little did I know that, that this Pastor Moses... 
that rides his motorcycle wasn't always a pastor. He wasn't always this, this, this good guy. He, he had a past. He had, he had a history. And he saw me, and he said, listen, if I know God can do this to me, I know what God can do in your life. And that's why he didn't stop. And that's why he does what he does today. And that spirit that he has carried over to me. And that's why I do what I do. That's why Harry does what he does. Because God is that real. God is that alive today. For Moses to come up and talk about the revival in an individual, in each person, revival happens in you, and it's not a bigger picture, it's not in the body. And for God to give me that same word right here, that's proof, I'm telling you. That's proof that God is alive, that this is for real. I showed you guys at that church that day we went, right? I walked in that church. Who was with me? Rob and Johnny. Johnny's not here. And I walked into this church that we've never been to before. And I told, I said, dude, I'm having a rough day. Sunday morning, I said, last night, one of y'all did something, and I don't know what happened, and I was... I was, I was hot. I, I, I'm sitting at church. I was like, I wasn't even going to come today. Never met these people in my life. And I'm talking to Johnny. And I'm saying, Phew. I was like, I'm glad we're here. Boom, boom. Sitting there. And they begin worship. Small church like this. Pentecostal church. Small church. And the wife, it's a, it's a husband wife. She stops and she stops her husband in the middle, in the middle of worship and says, we need to, we need to pray for Pastor John. We need to pray for John. And they call me up and they lay their hands on me and they start praying for me. I didn't even talk to these people. In the middle of service, she goes, God's, God's, God's told me to call you up that, that you needed prayer. Again, this is why I stand here. This is why Moses continues to do this every day. Because we want to let you people know that Jesus is alive and real. That this is for real. That what we sing about and what we talk about is available to all of us. You guys want to change your lives? It's there. It, it's possible. It can happen. How do we do it? Right here. Listen, Moses was there for me for the first year of my, of, of, of my life, of my walk. I was up his butt. I was in his church every day. Every time I was open, every spare minute, I was there. I, was, I, I spent as much time. I built relationships inside the church. I got rid of what was in my life in the past, and I decided I needed to follow something. I wanted to change. If you want to change, he'll change your life. If you don't want to change, then don't waste your time. There's, listen, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with living your life, using dope, drinking every day. People do it all the time. The world is full of people that, that, that choose that lifestyle. But that lifestyle leads to eternal death in hell. Amen. It's that simple. Eternal death in hell. For the rest of your life, flesh on fire, gnashing of the teeth. It doesn't stop. Imagine your worst day. Imagine your worst sickness. Imagine the worst pain you've ever been. Never ending. Never ending. You guys complain about a toothache for a day and a half. Why is everybody looking at him? You guys complain about a hard day at work. My feet hurt. My back hurts. Imagine that pain amplified, never ending, never stopping. That's how real this is. This is real. This is what it's about. We pray for revival. We're praying for revival today. We're praying because the world right now is trying to suffocate this and kill this. And kill what's happening right here. They want to shut this book down. And they want to, they want to pump their new, their new society into us. They want us to follow this new temple that they want to build. They want us to have this, this, this new dialect and a new understanding of things. Listen, there's nothing wrong with refusing that. If it doesn't line up with what this book says, like I said, we can refuse it. We don't have to follow it. 
There's no social distancing in this book. If you're social distancing, that's your choice. Like I said, respect it. If some guy's sitting there coughing up and hacking and looks like he's dying over there, yes, stay away from him. If you choose that. But in this book, Jesus didn't stay away from nobody. He put his hands on everybody. He prayed for everybody. And if you want to walk in that type of faith, dude, he's going to honor that. He's going to honor that. But that might not be for everybody. I'm not telling you to go run out there and do that. But, but it's in this book. It's in this book. Those, those instructions are in this book. <clears throat> Community and communication is huge. I wouldn't know that Moses was doing this if there was no communication. So the body has to communicate with each other. Right now we see churches are building, 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 building. And no churches really interact with, with each other. How, how are we supposed to become one if no one's doing things like this? If no one comes together? I started service on Friday nights. And that's why we chose Friday nights. We chose Friday nights because we want to make it available to everybody. We want to make coming together and meeting available to anybody. We don't want to take anything away from people's Saturdays or Sundays because churches meet. So we do something on Friday. And people are like, oh, you're a seven-day Adventist? I said, no. I said, this is, this is what God's showing me to do. We, we, we come, we know this is the Sabbath. This is a, I'm like, hey, if that's what's got you here, great. We'll, we'll, praise God. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll use that. The world has, has created that, that dialect of this is my church. My church is great. I love my church. This isn't your church. This is his church, right? This might be your building, but this is his church. This is his body. So when people start talking about this is my church, I love my church, I get that. I understand you love your community, you love your family that you're with, but the church is much bigger than this. When I first met Moses, I couldn't believe all the churches. I remember, do you remember driving in that car? And I said, who are these guys? Who are these guys? Well, who's that church? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, well, guys, you guys don't like all get together and do stuff? He's like, no, it doesn't work like that. I didn't know what denomination was. I didn't know what Pentecostal, Catholic, I didn't know what any of that was. All I know is that Jesus had, had shown up in my life well, I allowed him to show up in my life or whatever happened, he was there. And he was that real. And listen, there's too many people struggling and hurting and, and, and self-destructing looking for this. Looking for this and filling it up with every single thing else in the world. My life has not been easier since I became a Christian. Not at all. My life hasn't become easier. I still deal with the same stuff. But we learn to respond and react in different ways. We learn to know that, that the world is not our God anymore. That how we did things, we don't have to do it because there's a whole other way to do things. There's a whole other, they call it the book of instructions, right? By, what's the little thing? Basic, yeah. Right. And that's cool. And it is. It's, it's, it's for real. It's here. I'm talking to you guys over there because, I, I don't know why, I'm, but I'm talking to everybody. <laughs> because that's how bad, that's, that's, that's why we do this. The pay is horrible. There is no pay in this. No one's getting rich preaching the word. We, 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 we're, our, 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 our payment will come in kingdom dollars. You heard me say this. I pay my guys in kingdom dollars. I tell them, God will take care of you when you go to heaven. So you collect from him. <laughs> But it's what the body needs to do. Revival isn't so much as isn't so much as people finding Christ as it is it, it's 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 the same as us telling people about Jesus. The revival and spreading the word, right? Because it's a new passion, a new love, a new life that comes. So not only is it a new life as an individual for us to build this and start this new relationship, but for us to go out and tell people about Jesus. How many people, literally, how many people today, don't even have to raise your hands, how many people today, just tell yourself, told somebody about Jesus? How many people today told somebody, Jesus loves you, or, or, or 
said something about Jesus to somebody, heard somebody complain and said, hey, Jesus loves you. If we're not doing that every day, that simple, we're not walking how we should be walking. We're supposed to, because no, no one else, the world is not going to tell that person that Jesus loves them. Here, in this setting, it's really easy. It's really easy to, hey, praise God. Jesus loves you. You say it back to me. And Jesus loves you, man. And you tell me Jesus loves me. And, and Jesus is amazing. And, and we can sit here and tell each other all kinds of cool things about Jesus. You're right. I remember our first Bible study. I'm sitting. It was at Revolution. And we're sitting there in Bible study. And we're talking about Jesus. And I'm looking. I'm going, is there anybody here believing Jesus? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, why, why, are we, why are we sitting here talking to ourselves about Jesus? Like, we already know Jesus. I understand now what Bible study is for and growing stuff like it. But at that time, I knew that there's a dying world out there that needed to know about Jesus. There was people out there that never heard about Jesus. And here we are sitting in a group of guys talking about Jesus amongst ourselves that already know Jesus. It didn't make any, it didn't make any sense to me. And that's how we should be. We should be that excited and that passionate. That's where it's going to happen. You know why? Because that's what we're praying for. Do you understand? When you're praying for revival, what do you think is going to happen? When we pray for something, we pray for, Lord, I hope this community just comes together. I hope these churches begin to work together. I hope, I hope that, that, that people start going out and preaching the word and start letting people know who Jesus is and leading people to Christ. Lord, I, 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 hope, you, I hope you make that happen soon. I, huh? What? That's our job. You're praying for yourself. You're praying. Listen, don't, don't pray about don't look at, look at this in another way. Look at this going, God, help me lead people to Christ. Help me exi- be, be your ambassador. Help me be a better example of who you are. I pray that every day. Let me be a better example. Where are you at, Misha? I pray every day. Let me be a better example. Because sometimes I know that our, 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 our flesh gets in the way. And then the enemy takes that, and what does he do? He starts pounding you in the head. You're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing, you're worthless. It's all lies. It's all lies. Every single person right here is called to tell somebody about Jesus. You're all called to tell your testimony. You're all called to let people know that there's, that there's another way to live life. You're all called to bring somebody to church. Each and every one of you. I don't care if you've been saved a day or a thousand days. We're all called to this. Every single person. And I think the reason why after I got saved here is because I didn't know any difference. I didn't, no one, no one, I didn't grow up in church. I never had a, 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 an experience of, I, didn't, I never had a pastor tell me something that I wasn't ready or I couldn't do something before as I first got saved. Because I hear a lot of stories. I hear a lot of people got hurt in the church. And that's why, that's why they're standoffish. That's why they're where they're at now. That they're, they, they really don't have a, a, a fire per se. Because someone told them, hey, you need to slow down. Hey, you know what? Your life, you don't have it together yet. So you can't go out there telling everybody about Jesus. Until you're, you're setting a bad example. You need, to, you need to slow down. Man, that is a lie from hell. It's a lie from hell. You, you are qualified to tell someone about Jesus. You know why? Because you believe in Jesus. That's it. You believe in Jesus. If you believe in who he is and what he did, you need to be telling somebody about Jesus. And right now, what's going on in this world, they need Jesus. We need Jesus more than anything. The world needs Jesus more than anything. They're going to, in, in, on Saturday, they're going to Washington and they're praying for repentance. They're praying for, for repentance and revival. Repentance is huge. It's huge. And we talked about repentance last night. We talked about it's just, it's turning. But, but confession is huge also. And you don't have to confess to me, but, but confessing to God, letting him know. And confession starts your conversation with him. And, 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 and it lets him know that you know that what you're living and how you're doing isn't the way it's supposed to be. You're not hiding nothing from him. Nobody, I don't care where you're at, what's going on, 
you're not doing something that he doesn't see. But what he wants to know is that you know what you're doing isn't right. And then you start that with him. And he's going to work on that with you. His Holy Spirit will work with you on that. And that's what it's all about. We've, but but we, we've, we've got to start with that relationship. We've got to start with, with that communication. Just because you're sitting in church doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you're here doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you got baptized doesn't always mean you're always going to heaven. There's, there's something that takes place. And if that conversion, if that, if that exchange doesn't take place, you're going you're gonna to have that, that immortal life in hell. You can have that immortal life in heaven if you choose. And you've got nothing to lose by giving your life 100% and surrendering fully to the Lord right here. Tonight, tomorrow night, tomorrow might be too late. Who's driving? <laughs> Harry, you want to play music? Oh, he won a second. Hold on. Ben, you want to? Come on. Harry gets back. There's, this is, in worship, worship is huge. It's more than just a song. It's more than just singing. What happens is we come in to one accord with each other when we sing. We're singing to our God. We're praising our God. We're worshiping our God. Our ministry is, is, is I call it, we're a music ministry. We don't focus on just music. But when the, when the armies went to war, the band led. So that, has, that, that, that means something. There's something in that. We used to sit down when we played. We used to not stand up. And it was just more of a sign of surrendering to Christ and, and to take the attention off of us and so we can just focus and then Harry said something one day about we should be standing up and I said okay and, and when I saw that he said if we stand up you guys will stand up and then I started thinking man how many battles were won with people sitting down <laughs> none you had to stand up. You had to become a part of it. You had to be in one accord with your comrades and with your brothers that were, that, that, that were there next to you. It's a, it's a, worship is an action. It's nice. He plays good songs and it's fun to listen to and this and that. And it's cool to raise your hands and, and clap and sing. But there's something that takes place. There's, there's, it's, 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 it's definitely spiritual. It's when the, the presence of the kingdom comes down right here with us. And you can stay in that. It doesn't, when you leave here, you don't have to leave that here. It's your choice. You can take that. And you've got to stay in it. Because as soon as you go out those doors, as soon as you go out those doors, that enemy is waiting to suck it right out of you. He's waiting to offend you in some way. He's waiting for you to get upset. Or, or, or ticked off about something and you're going to go right back to yourself we don't have to that's your choice we don't have to we, we, we can be that crazy Christian that crazy believer we can, we can laugh at offense when someone yells at us when someone does something to us we can laugh at them say Jesus loves you and that person is going to go what's wrong with this person now I'm preaching this because I'm preaching to myself <laughs> Amen. So participate and um and be a part of this. Be a part of this of this body. Be a part of this community. Love love your church by being a part of the church that the people that are standing next to you. These are the people that you're going to be living eternity with when we die. And if you believe this is we have eternal life with our brothers and sisters. And it's this church, it's that church, 
It's a church down the street. Do you remember going to the parking lot and introducing ourselves? Did you come with me? And 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 I said, let's go, let's go to churches before they open up on Sunday. And let's go to the parking lot and just introduce ourselves. Just let's just say hi to them and say, hey, it's great to know you. I, I can't wait to live life with you in heaven. And they looked at me like I was nuts. They're like, what? They're like, who are you? And I'm just like, hey, because it's it's such an amazing, it's such a revelation. If you can put this in your head and understand that this is real, and what this book says, and what we're talking about is real, man, you're going to start to live your life a different way. You will. It's there. It's what he wants. You should stand out from the world. You should stand out. So when you walk around, when you go places, people should know, hey, he's, there's something different about him. There's something that that, that that guy has that I don't know what it is, but maybe I want to ask him or I want something what he has. And maybe you already know. Maybe you see it. And maybe you know it's it's Jesus. But it's 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 there. He's there. He's available to all of us. Man, this is this is awesome that Moses is doing this. This is act this is the first time that I've ever spoke at his church, at this church, and it's kind of wild. You know, this was eight years ago that took me to the mall <laughs> and bought me a Bible and um and and man do you remember that I started reading the Bible in like two days three days I went blind in my eye I couldn't see and I went to the hospital and I called him I didn't know anybody and I called him and 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 he came to the hospital with me and he's sitting there and I'm like dude they don't know what's wrong with my eye and the doctor comes in and goes we don't know what's wrong with you there's this big thing right here and I couldn't see around it and I said, well, this guy over here is the guy who got me the book. He's the one told me to read it. He said that the devil doesn't want me to read the Bible and that this could be from Satan and I can't read the Bible. And the doctor said, the doctor says, it could be true. I went, huh? It was, it's, 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 it's that real. It's that real and it's that alive. And it lasted for a couple months and I continued to read and I continued to, 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 to structure and build a new foundation in my life, and and this is where this is this is a testimony of where of where it's brought me. This is what I do. What, what I'm doing. This is for everybody. This is I'm, I'm there's nothing special. The only thing that's special about me is that I decided to to believe what this book had to say, and and that's that's for every single person here, any phase of your life, wherever you're at. It's there, and it's available. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for allowing this. And, and we're still here. This isn't, this isn't done. <laughs> we're going to play. If you guys want prayer, we'll pray for you. If there's something that you, that you want to do, if, there's, if, there's, if, if you want to come to the altar, if you want to get on your knees and... and and confess or repent if you've got something you want to ask Moses is right here I'm right here if there's something on your heart that's bothering you that you just want to get off you're in a safe place here non-judging I'm giving that to you all tonight <laughs> you can tell me anything tonight and it won't go out of here. It won't go out of here. It'll stay right here. I promise. So God, we thank you for, for the work that you've done in us. We thank you for what you continue to do in our lives. We thank you for this church and this body and this building and this pastor and his family and the, and the tears and the blood that he's poured into this place, Lord. And the work that's done here and the lives that are changed through this place, Lord. We, we thank you and we give you all the honor and all the praise in that. spoke a word but you were singing over me yes, you have been so so good to me before I breathed a breath Lord you breathed your life in me 
Jesus, you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending 